Hello, and welcome to On Point. I'm Ariana Takis. Women's health has been a sensitive topic in politics, more specifically, the funding of Planned Parenthood, which was a controversial issue even before President Trump took office. Planned Parenthood says it provides health care services to 2.5 million people each year. Trump recently quietly signed a bill passed in the Senate with a tie-breaking vote from Mike Pence, allowing states to withhold federal money from organizations providing abortion services. Those who oppose Planned Parenthood say they don't want their tax dollars to go to abortion services. But Planned Parenthood and other abortion service providers are already banned from using taxpayer money for the procedure. The GOP health care bill will now head to the Senate and the future of these services could be at risk. If passed, clinics could lose up to 30 percent of their funding. Planned Parenthood is safe for now, but the threat to defund it still looms. Here at CSUN, all students have access to health care and reproductive health care counseling. On Point's Lexi Wilson has more on the story. Thanks, Ariana. I'd like to welcome our guests here today. We have Mahela, Vince, Planned Parenthood Headquarters intern, founder and president of Alliance for Reproductive Freedom to represent Planned Parenthood. We also have Shirley Navarro, registered nurse practitioner at Clot Student Health Center. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having us. Yes. yes. Thank you. So I just kind of want to start and talk about general women's health. So what defines women's health? And we can start with Shirley. Um, I mean, women's health is a pretty broad thing. I think when most people think about women's health, you're thinking like pap smears, pelvic exams, um, but also thinking about heart health as well too. So, you know, all encompassing, um, a lot of people think also to include like birth control services. Um, it, it's such a, I guess, broad definition that's hard to really say like specific, like what does it entail? But mostly, I guess, people think about, again, pelvic exams, pap smears. Yeah, um, as a public health major, um, the World Health Organization defines health as just like the, not just the absence of disease, but also the complete physical, emotional, and mental well-being. And that encompasses women's health as well as, um, you know, reproductive measures Right. also. And why is women's health so important? Um, I mean, it's, I think a better question is why is health so important? You know, I think we like to kind of gender specify it, but really it's just health. Um, it's good to be on top of it, be proactive, because unfortunately we tend to kind of forget it or we, there's just too many obstacles or barriers to access health care. Um, and by the time, if you really don't have any, if you don't have your health, you really don't have anything. Um, health is yeah. wealth, definitely. Yeah, yes. Awesome. And what resources are there for women's health specifically? Well, right now through Family Pact and Title X, there are a lot of um, resources for low income vulnerable populations, um, such as preventative screening, you know, STI screening, um, just a lot of services that go into prevention are definitely there for women. Um, breast screenings. Mm -hmm. At Cloth Student Health Center, uh, there's a variety of services as well as referrals if you if we don't offer it, um, this actual service itself. So um, like I said earlier, pap smears, pelvic exams, STD testing, uh, referrals for mammograms, um, you know, heart health obviously because as we all know, um, heart disease is the number one killer next to I believe cancer obviously uh, for women. Um, what else is there? Uh, reproductive health services, and we also offer um, family pack services as well too, which uh, or family pack coverage as well. Awesome. So Shirley, talking about that, um, how often should women visit these clinics? Should it be something that they go to regularly? Um, well, according to CDC guidelines for women between the ages of 21 and 25, I think they recommend STI screening or STD screening um, at least once a year. Um, if let's say you have higher risks um, in terms of like having multiple partners or um, not using really good like contraception, then maybe like every six months or so, depending on your risk. Obviously, if you're having symptoms, also a really good reason to go. Um, as for like general... Um, 
uh, health care maintenance. So pap smears for women between the age of 21 and 30 is actually every three years if everything is normal, and over 30 is every five years. Got it. Perfect. And in general, how much do women usually pay for these rep reproductive health services? Um, at CLOTS, it's pretty amazing. So, you know, we serve the CSUN community. Um, so if you're a student, even sometimes faculty, staff, depending on the situation, um, if you um, come in and let's say you don't qualify for family pact, your, your visits with the pl uh, clinician themselves is completely covered. Um, the things that are very low cost is pretty much any labs or certain labs unfortunately do have fees to them and, and certain medications. Um, if you have family pact, as Mahela was talking about, it covers for services that prevent obviously um, unplanned pregnancies or you know not, not ready for pregnancy yet and also to prevent STIs as well too. Awesome. And Mahela, so what are some of these pressing issues for women's health right now that you've seen? Um, I've seen a lot of issues, but I've also seen an outpour of support. Um, a lot of issues would probably be just the attack on, on women's health right now. Um, you know, the global gag rule, for instance, is stopping practitioners um, from other countries from speaking on behalf of all comprehensive women's health care that deal with abortion, which has been a huge issue. And um, I personally believe that there's just, with our current administration, I do think that women's health issues and rights are just under attack at this very moment. Um, the, um, I can't really define like what the most pressing issue is besides the issue of abortion. Right. So since you're talking about that, we actually talked to some CSUN students here about the new administration and how Trump's actions are affecting women's health. He's taking our option, our choice away, our right. And if he's already planning on taking this away, what goes through my mind is like, what else is he planning to take away? What, what does our future look like as a woman? It is our choice as, as a female, as a mother, as a woman, as a student, uh, as, as a citizen here. I, f I feel like it's very important for us to keep our rights. So what response do you guys have to that? I couldn't agree more with that. Yeah. It is our right. It's our constitutional right. And people don't understand that you are taking a right away. You are in, you know, impeding on our human rights with this kind of you know, the whole pro-life movement is just, abortions are going to happen, whether they're legal or not. And if you care about the life of the woman, you would take that into consideration. Yeah, I think it's just important that we honor people's options. Um, and, you know, we try to definitely do that at CLOTS. We, you know, unfortunately, this is going, whatever the current administration decides to do, it is going to definitely have an effect on all of us. So Shirley, is there enough education in women's health right now? Um, well, what do you mean by enough education? So are people, are women specifically getting the right education to know that they do have options here? Here at CSUN itself? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we definitely try our best. We have a great community education program um, with our community health workers at uh, Claude Student Health Center, and they try every opportunity to kind of go out into our community and you know discuss what we offer you know I'm constantly out in a lot of classrooms pretty much like urging students to come in and not necessarily to be seeing anything particular but just to know what your options are and know what your resources are because when it comes down to it um, that's kind of how you're going to survive right is knowing where you can get access and if not just within health everything else too right um, so yeah, no, I, I believe, I feel that, you know, obviously there's always room for improvement um, and we always are trying to find more people to kind of get the word out there. We're at every single health fair. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can definitely do better, but I think we, at CLOTS we do our, our current best, obviously, um, in terms of trying to get the word out and educating people about, you know, just coming in and being proactive about their own health. Yeah, the Clot Center does do a lot of great things for women's health. And can you talk more about those services that are provided? Yeah, I mean, specifically, we offer things like pap, uh, pap smears, STI screenings, um, you know, some things that don't lie within that, like if people are having just general, like, discomfort, um, 
in their you know reproductive health region, definitely you can come in for that as well. Uh, we are very much open to like walk-in um, appointments, or at least we try to get you in the same day or the day after. Um, besides that, we also have a lot of uh, birth control um, options counseling. Uh, we have a counselor there, Amy Reichbach, and she is an amazing resource in terms of kind of giving students the time um, and the information about what options they have uh, for reproductive uh, pregnancy prevention mm -hmm. um, and, and STI prevention as well, too. Um, what else is there? in terms of that it's not just beyond women's health because obviously you know there's another part of it too so we offer a lot of men's health services as well um, that are also covered within family pack so family pack just to kind of clarify is not only for women it is for males as well too in terms of preventing STIs and um, you know using appropriate contraception or at least learning about it because oftentimes you know friends talk and it's good to educate everybody in general. Of course. And talking about Family Pact, just so that our audience knows, it's, it provides medical knowledge, assistance, and services relating to the planning of families. So why is this such a beneficial service to have? So Family Pact pretty much covers the fees for services that the, what you had just mentioned, meaning that like typically, um, let's say you, you know, were to come in, you know, CSUN again is a very special environment because we provide such low cost services. But if you really go outside to the outside community and you don't have family packed, you go get a pap smear, it's probably gonna cost you like eh, maybe 150 to over $200. And that's just for a typical pap smear and your visit with the clinician. With family packed, it'll cover for that. So the thing is, is it really helps a lot, like a huge population where Price is an issue, finances are an issue. I mean, you know, people don't have money like growing on trees, right? So it's like, well, most people don't. Um, so it, it just kind of helps to remove that barrier, um, financial barrier to access your basic healthcare needs. Um, birth control on a monthly basis. Let's say you're, you're paying for, you know, packs of pills. I would say your cheapest pack of pill may, may be $10, but it can range up to like, sometimes 40 to 70 dollars a month so who has like 70 dollars you know to dish out every single month to what to just help to prevent to not get a you know a, a unplanned pregnancy that's just it's it's a lot of money so family pack definitely has its role in terms of um really catching that population that not only financially but also like confidentiality wise uh, is an issue like they need to keep their services confidential because of you know maybe cultural sensitivities or um, you know they might be in a relationship that can be um, where they have to hide you know their birth control method or that they have to pay for it type of thing. Right so we did bring up the topic of the new administration do you think anything is going to change for women's health here at CSUN? Um, at this moment, no. So, you know, we are going to provide the same services that we have been providing, um, you know, to our best ability with full confidentiality, obviously, and whatever we can do within our power. So, you know, we, we're definitely always, I guess, uh, trying to be as up to date as possible, um, and fingers crossed, obviously. Uh, but no, nothing is going to change, not, a, not as of, you know, from what we know today. I'm sure students will be happy to hear about that. Definitely, definitely. definitely. Especially in California, SB 9 um, passed earlier this year, and that protects women's rights, at least in California, where um, our congressmen are not going to pass any legislation that will roll back the clock on our rights. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, And how is the Clot Center different from Planned Parenthood? Because I know that students do pay a service fee to go to the center. So how is that kind of different from Planned Parenthood? And Michaela, feel free to jump in on that as well. I well mean, I've, sorry, go ahead. I've used um, the Clot <clears throat> Center, and um, I haven't had to pay a fee. And I've gone to Planned Parenthood, and I haven't had to pay a fee. So in that aspect, I don't think that there's much of a difference, but maybe... Well, Cloud Center, the services are based on student fees. So it's probably fees, but not like you come every time you have to pay a fee, like a copay type of situation. Right. It's a fee that's included, I believe, like when you and pay your, your tuition. tuition. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, whether you come one time or a hundred times, that, that fee that you paid in your tuition, that's it. Now, when it comes to like labs, it depends on what lab is being ordered and 
you know, than if there's a fee or not. So like if it's family packed, if it's, you know, anything related to family pack, like STD testing or pregnancy testing or anything like that, there's no fees associated with that. Clots Student Health Center, you know, beyond women's health also covers like primary care um, health issues as well too. So like if you're sick, if you, um, you know, you hurt yourself on campus or, you know, you think um, you're having, you know, trouble breathing, you know, you can still come to us. I think a lot of Planned Parenthoods, and uh, Mahila, I don't know if you can speak to this, are actually offering primary care services as well too. Yeah, so a lot of, um especially low-income women, will use Planned Parenthood as like their primary care provider, mm -hmm. which a lot of people don't know. So defunding Planned Parenthood would really devastate right. the health of a lot of, especially vulnerable populations. Yeah, and I want to talk about Planned Parenthood. Obviously, it has become controversial. And I do want to talk about two terms, so pro-life and pro-choice. What do these mean to you guys, and um, why are these so controversial, and why are these so important? Well, like I mentioned earlier, I am pro-life, life of the woman. Um, you know, like I said, abortions are going to happen. If they're legal and they're safe, you are potentially saving lives that way. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, as Clot Student Health Center, you know, we don't have a, you know, it's just pretty much offering options and choices. Um, on a personal note, you know, I also am definitely, you know, pro-choice as well. Um, but, you know, my, my, I guess, yeah, my opinion or my own um, ideals never set in into what the patient ultimately wants um, or their individual standpoints. Um, yeah, we, we just, when a person comes in, if they are pregnant, um, you know, we give them pretty much choices, options, this is, you know, you can do this, this and this, you know, we are really good at hooking people up with, um, I guess, referrals in terms of like, okay, they want to talk it out even more. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a pretty amazing place in terms of like, just it's safe, um, which I think that's probably the most important thing right now when a woman is in that position where she is pregnant and she wants to get more information. Um, Clots is a really good place to have in terms of a resource. Definitely. So there was a protest at Planned Parenthood in Van Nuys, and they were protesting, it was pro-life groups protesting the resources, and um, excuse me, the resources that Planned Parenthood does provide. And we did find a pro-choice person there, and here's what he had to say. It's, I mean, everyone here likes to think that Planned Parenthood just does abortions, but the truth is, is you know, I've got friends who come here for prenatal care. I've got friends who come here for uh, prophylactics, for basic medical, you know, just the kind of stuff that they can't afford to get elsewhere, the kind of stuff they're not going to get from, you know, if they don't have a job that gives them decent health care, they got to go somewhere for this stuff. Um, a point I also wanted to bring up is that Planned Parenthood does not receive any federal funds for abortions and only 3% of their services are actually abor abortion. 97% um, are just preventative care. Awesome. And how does your organization benefit women? <laughs> well, um, as a young woman myself and a student here at CSUN, um, before I knew about the Clot Center, I went to Planned Parenthood because, you know, I didn't have that relationship with my parents where I could be open necessarily with them about my reproductive health, so I use this organization to um, basically learn and to take care of myself and um, it was just an invaluable resource for a young person and I don't know where I would be today without this organization. Awesome. And we did try to get someone from the pro-life side and unfortunately we were not able to, but if a pro-life person was here today, I think some of the key points that they would make is one, life starts at conception, and two, you shouldn't be having sex unless you're ready to have a family. So at that protest for pro-life, we talked to some people and here's what they had to say. It's all bogus, all of the advertisement um, in support of Planned Parenthood when they're legitimate medical clinics that provide all of the services that women and children need. So we just want the money redirected to those pro-life centers. So it's not about taking services away from women. It's actually to provide them better services without having women forced to um, agree to, to have an abortion. They're blinded with this stuff about choice, but it's really taking away the choice. They're not seeing all the different options there is. Adoption, and there's people who are going to help them out, you know? 
So I believe life begins at conception, and um, at that point, if somebody chooses to terminate that life, it is murder. So if for a woman to say, well, you can't dictate what I do, it's my body, my choice, it's like, no, there's another body in there. So I'd like you guys to respond to what was said. I mean, I've never been to Planned Parenthood myself, but I have actually friends, other nurse practitioners that work there, and um, they provide options counseling as well, too. So it's not like, oh, you're here at Planned Parenthood, awesome, sign up for your abortion right now. So um, that's something that would be nice to clarify, yeah. I think it's such a sensitive issue, and I don't think anyone ever wants an abortion. I don't think people you know, I genuinely don't believe that women want that. But when things happen and they're unplanned and you cannot, you know, care for another life, is it really fair to bring that life into this world? Um, that's kind of my stance. Why do you think there are so many misconceptions about Planned Parenthood only providing abortions? Well, I personally think that the pro-life movement is um, purely or that ideology is purely religious and we are a secular nation and I don't think that you you can put those you know beliefs onto someone else and um, life beginning at conception that's not how you know someone who views things from a scientific standpoint would see it so you know there are genetic abnormalities there are cases of rape there are a lot of different factors that would you know, necessitate a woman to, to end um, a pregnancy. And people need to be a little more sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. So CSUN students did express how they would feel if Planned Parenthood is going to go through defunding. So here's what they had to say. Um, I think that's a very bad idea because um, a, lot of, a lot of low income women go there and that's the only place that they have access for their health care. You know, they're just not in a situation to where they can actually raise a child. Like, why bring another child in? If he's already cutting, uh, you know, health care and all these things, like, specifically low-income families, they'd be the ones affected. And a lot of those women, particularly also minorities, suffer from that. Why do you think Trump wants to defund an organization like Planned Parenthood? And what does that mean for women's health in your organization? Um... I don't know necessarily why he wants to defund Planned Parenthood, especially I don't understand how you can oblige a woman to have a child but deny her the rights to affordable housing, a livable wage, mm -hmm. health care. So I, I don't know what his reason for outlawing abortion is except religion. That's the only guess I can, I can take, yeah. Yeah, I can't really speak to that either. I mean, <laughs> I who don't knows know what's going on there, so. <laughs> Perhaps to keep the people in power in power and to keep those who are vulnerable in their, you know, cycle of poverty. Right. So. Definitely. So on the topic of abortion, Roe versus Wade was probably one of the most influential decisions made for women's rights and reproductive. Um, Donald Trump is talking about maybe going against that. How do you feel about that? And will that hurt women's rights and to make their own decisions? Um, Absolutely. <laughs> I feel like this whole interview, um, we've kind of made a case how that would be devastating to, to women. Um, do you have any? I don't. I mean, I don't think that's going to be likely. But then again, I didn't think he was going to win either. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And why do you guys still believe that this is still an issue? We're still talking about women's rights. We're still talking about abortion. Because of our current administration. Mm -hmm. I agree. And what's next for women? How can women get involved? Planned Parenthood has just had an outpour of support lately to the point where we have so many volunteers, we don't know where to put them. Because awesome. so many women want to get involved. Um, it actually says on our website right now that um, due to, you know, recent inquiries or the abundance of potential volunteers that we right now don't really um, know where to place a lot of people, but it's just seeing the amount of support that we've been getting has just been phenomenal and something that I feel like grassroots organizing and just people coming together and having that voice, maybe we were starting to lose sight of that and now it's coming back. It's given us an excuse to um, 
you know, get together and fight for what's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, like, Planned Parenthood definitely has, is out there in the media, but there's also a lot of other smaller organizations that people can definitely, like all the community clinics, they probably would benefit, uh, you know, largely from volunteerism. Um, so kind of just doing your research with that, you know, being aware of what's going on as well, too. So, um, you know, just kind of keeping up in terms of what, you know, what types of laws are being passed and obviously you know direct you know writing writing a letter to your you know congress to um you know your uh, gosh I, I, my mind officials. is yeah your elected <laughs> officials um in terms of you know voicing your opinion and voicing you know what's going on is is not right and um i think that goes a long way um and just you know obviously being aware um I'm totally not a millennial, and I'm going to say this, but like being woke, right? So, um, <laughs> love it. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. That's actually all the time we have. So, thank you. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So, I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cooked my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. What's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK. But remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. To be at peace with myself is the most prominent thing, and I am at peace with myself. I didn't build this deck, I'm just playing the game. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's it. Meals on Wheels has given me a mode of freedom that I wouldn't have otherwise. I'm making sure they get the nutrition that I need, and it's a balanced meal. My name is Maurice McGriff. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Thank you for watching On Point. You can follow us on social media at CSUN On Point. You can hear us on KCSN 88.5 FM on Sunday mornings at 5.30. You can watch us on Santa Clarita Valley Television on Sundays at 11 and at 5. And on LA 36 on Saturday afternoons at 3. For all of us here at On Point, I'm Ariana Takis.